ंग On a very fine Thursday morning over here in Istanbul, where it has rained overnight. But first things first, we hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well. And that my colleague right next to me is a very well-learned person in the first place. You know, who always makes sure to come up with reviews of books too as well. Let me welcome her. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, Haja. How are you doing today? Wa Alaikum Assalam, and thank you so much for introducing me. So Shazad, word is around the corner that you know someone is still high up in the mountains <laughs> and enjoying, and you know is getting a hard time uh, acclimatizing yeah, back yeah, to work. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was literally a hard time, <laughs> you know, right. because for all of those people who are out there, you know, um, on the um, first and the second day of feed, you know, <laughs> I tried traveling up here right. as well, and that was beyond nine thousand feet. So oh. it was initially when I reached over there, it was hard for me to breathe over there. Okay. And then when I came down, and why you know, why is that? So are you asthmatic or something? No, I'm not asthmatic, oh. but you know the oxygen levels were very oh. low over there too oh. as well. So no, it was a little difficult for me. But then other than that, the problem was that today when I woke up at six thirty in the morning, <laughs> I never realized that I actually have to be at work. You know, so I'm oh. still. You know, in that phase of transitioning from uh, chutiya, from vacations to going right. back to work as well, and then I was like, hey, you know what? I wanted to come to work, so, you know, so I had to right. trick my brain. I was like, okay, you know, if I'm going to right. tell my brain that I need to work, only then I will feel like working. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with all our energy, making sure that you know we are going to create that difference which is required in changing perspectives, because that's what PTV World is all about. Wow, that's right. a wonderful link. But yes, let's get started. How right. is it for you? You know, from okay. vacation to work and Eid and everything. Okay, so my Eid was very hectic in terms of because we were shifting. Um, but yes, you know, I'm really glad that I came back to office and I'm back to the routine and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that I'm started waking up early in the morning. You know, because uh, since they were vacation, so I was you know waking up pretty late, and I wow. don't like it. That's wonderful. Uh, so one one simple question, right. and then we can move on with the show. And that is, imagine that you know yeah. I have said that on another show as well that one of my colleagues was was not really interested. I'm sorry that I'm doing <laughs> that again, but I promise that this will be the last time. You know, so since we have spoken That's about right. you know how. I think that you really need to do kurbani let me ask you this so <laughs> was the pressure enough did you do that or you didn't I think the pressure is really hard for me now to bear so you know next time I will not disappoint you <laughs> inshallah inshallah okay. inshallah and that's okay. wonderful with, with that ladies and gentlemen let's get started obviously first of all I think a lot of okay. people now will have faith in Allah almighty we have been talking about it right. that it's only Allah who can create so many galaxies and galaxies right. within galaxies and you know people always come up with stories with black hole and what not right, right. but now finally ladies and gentlemen the james webb telescope pictures are out and nasa has unveiled all of those pictures there's a lot of activity which we will be monitoring within the cosmos as well so imagine hajra nasa right. unveiled more of its initial showcase from the james webb telescope the largest most powerful orbital observ observatory ever launched the first batch of full color high resolution pictures that's the point which took weeks to render from a raw telescope data was selected by nasa to provide compelling early images from webb's major areas of inquiry and a preview of science missions ahead the dollar 9 billion infrared telescope built for nasa by aerospace giant northrop grumman corp is expected to revolutionize astronomy by allowing scientists to peer farther than before and with greater clarity into the cosmos to the dawn of the known universe wow interesting once there the telescope underwent a months long process to unfurl all of its components including a sun shield the size of a tennis court and to align its mirrors and calibrate its instruments wow with web now finally tuned and fully focused astronomers will embark on a completely selected list of science projects exploring the evolution of galaxies the life cycles of stars the atmospheres of distant exoplanets and the moons of our outer solar system among the four other web targets getting their close ups on tuesday are two enormous clouds of gas and dust blasted into space by stellar explosions to form incubators for new stars the carina nebula and the southern ring nebula each thousands of light years away from earth wow this is wow. so fascinating i'm this just is... so excited i've always been that science guy 
By the way, I always wanted to be an you know astronomer because I really wanted to go out in the space and explore you know what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has out there. Um, because there's so much to explore and our human intellect has you know so much to absorb when it comes to that. So Shahzad, science is not just making strides when it comes to the space; it's also making strides when it comes to the ocean. Yeah. So and we have talked about it as well. You know how like, you know microplastics was found right. in in fish within the uh, right, right. when we talk about right. the sea wall. Yes. Right. So microplastics eating reward fish may one day help to clean pollution from our oceans. Uh, soft to touch and just 1.3 centimeter in size, these boards can already suck up microplastics in shallow water according to the team of sci Chinese scientists from Sichuan University located in China's southwest. Oh, that's amazing. And the aim is to make them collect microplastics beyond the surface at deeper levels and give information to analyze marine pollution in the real time, uh, one of the researchers who developed the board said. Uh, we developed such a lightweight miniaturized report. It can be used in many ways. For example, in biomedical or hazardous operations, such as small robot that can be localized to a part of your body or to help you eliminate some diseases. This black robot fish is irradiated by the light, helping it to flap its fin and wiggle its body. And scientists can control the fish using the light to avoid crashing into other fish or ships. Wow. Oh wow, that's really interesting, you know, and how Chinese are coming up with the ways to, you know, fight climate change. And it is one of the way, you know, when it comes to the... Um, Marine uh, pollution. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, right, you know, combating climate change and, you know, how the coral reefs are being... Um, you know, getting distracted by this uh, climate change. And, and we have talked about it as well because, you know, right. coral uh, reefs will right. actually help us, you know, kind of right. take out uh, carbon dioxide yes. from the environment too right. as well. And not just that, right. imagine two or three months before we actually broke this news as well right. where microplastics were found in a human too as well. Right. It's very dangerous in the right. first place. And so in I the unborn babies yes, too, right? Yes, this yes. is a so, sort of concern for us because, you know, uh, the coral reefs are the biggest ecosystem that are getting destroyed because of a human activity, because of the climate change. Yeah. You know, and now moving on to another news which is about <laughs> Euro versus the dollar. And, and I think I have a right. very uh, amazing connection to that as well because, you know, all, all this time I've seen people, you know, kind of making sure that they're right. going to invest in dollars and just right. keep them with themselves as well because they know that they're going to get higher. Right. But all of those people who had euros in their pockets, guess what? <laughs> Euro for the very first time right. in the history is equal to the dollar, ladies and gentlemen. And that's, uh, I, I don't think that people with euros are uh, able to keep calm. The euro matching of dipping below the dollar presents a mostly psychological milestone, some experts say, but central banks and pol policy makers across the eurozone are likely to face pressures to address depreciation concerns. The two currencies reached parity Wednesday morning, according to Bloomberg, after the euro abruptly lost value following the release of worrisome U.S. inflation data. The euro has been losing ground against the dollar since the start of the year when it hovered near dollar 1.13, well of its peak of nearly dollar 1.60 in 2008. Live currency data reported by MarketWatch shows the euro slipping just a few hundredths of a cent above the dollar, while Bloomberg and Reuters reported that the euro briefly slipped below a dollar in value. Uh, I mean, imagine, obviously. So, yeah, I think that uh, it's the other way around. You know, people are not really very happy <laughs> right. about the euro being right. equal to the dollar. Okay. Now, let's talk about the weather. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, the, you know, good weather always makes, a, uh, I mean, I've made a, a smile, smile on the right. Face. Right, so intermittent to heavy rains continued at the scattered places in the parts of the country as Met Office predicted more rain with isolated heavy falls in the upper parts during next 24 hours. More rain, thunder showers are expected in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, East Balochistan and Lower Sin. Heavy rains are expected in Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, North East Punjab and Kashmir. So, Shahzad, due to the torrential rains, low-lying areas of the country will be inundated and floods in the local streams. Dangers of flood in the local and rainwater canals of Dera Ghazi Khan and Balochistan. Med Office also said that monsoon currents from Bay of Bengal are continuously penetrating in the upper and the central parts of the country, while another strong monsoon low-pressure area is likely to approach Sin from tomorrow. Wow. Okay. And you know what, what we really need to be worried about this time around is that when we talk about the monsoon downpour, hmm. you know, this year, you know, it has doubled from the last year around right. this time as well. Right. And it is because of climate change too as well in right. the first part. And NDMA, NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority, has actually stated hmm. that 88 women and children have died due to these monsoon rains and flash floods as well. Right. We will certainly talk about that. We have a dedicated segment in the later part of the show. But first, right. I think to kind of comprehend all of this knowledge and information, you right. really need good 
good education. Of course. When we talk about education in the times of COVID, we have seen that, you know, people have moved right. on to learning management systems and how everything was right. online. And, you know, even in Netherlands, now people are saying that we really need to just work from home and they're making it legal too as well. So imagine, right. you know, you, you save the infrastructure cost, you, uh, you know, save the overheads right. too as well. And there's a lot of other things as well. Right. But when it comes down to education-based technology solutions, I think Talimabad in the oh, first place wow. has done quite a lot. They've contributed quite a lot. Imagine one right. of our very amazing team members, Miss Asiya's daughter uses Talimabad application and now she's very good at Urdu. You know, that's what oh, she says Allah. because Kaaf say Kenji and Kenji say, you know, you, you, you <laughs> right. keep on moving. So they yeah. actually, what they do is, that obviously in the first place, your kid is able to learn that too uh, via your iPad or your cell phone once you uh, download the application. Right. But it's as simple as somebody giving you a story to relate to what you have learned. And that's how we used to learn, you know, even while right. we were growing up, you know, right. so I would have my passwords, for example, all the initials right. of all the definitions. And then this is how yeah, I used to yeah. remember. Right. But the concept has changed. You know, the team was over here on the show right. a few months back as well. So we're going to take a recap. And then we will move on to where how they say that, you know, it's actually going to contribute as an adaptive learning system. And not just that, it's going to be for the teachers, the parents, the schools, you know, for everybody. So why not? Hey, you know, kudos to learning. So to talk about that, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be a senior strategist at Talimabad. And ladies and gentlemen, he is Mr. Tasweed. Ahmed, hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? doing well and thank you so much for inviting us thank you very much for joining us wonderful to have you and alongside obviously we certainly wanted somebody to speak about their own experiences you know because when we talk about teacher training you know it is it is a topic which has been under a debate you know there are people who say okay you know this shouldn't be the curricula or you know this should be the curricula and how the teachers really need to be adaptive with technology and how we know you know how difficult it is for our parents to kind of right. get uh, accustomed to a newer iphone or probably right. any android right. phone too as well mm -hmm. it right. takes time so we wanted a teacher to represent and come up with their own challenges which they faced with such applications or education uh, technology based solutions as well so like ladies and gentlemen to talk about that we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an educationist himself and he happens to be mr faisal abdullah hello assalamu alaikum sir Welcome how are you i'm good how about you absolutely perfect thank you very much for joining thank us you so sir. Much. what do you want me to say what do kids call you sir teacher yes, mostly sir ustad ji yes something of that sir okay ustad ji thank you very much for joining us so let's get started sir let's do a little recap from the very first time when talimabad's team was over here so what has changed what have you been doing yeah, so um, the last time that we were here, and we were very lucky for you to invite us. And exactly. uh, as you said, that uh, PTV World is somebody who's uh, is, is a channel who's helping change perspectives. True. So that's exactly the, what we are doing as well in education, by involving, by amalgamating education technology uh, into schools. We try to create this platform where learning is fun, mm -hmm. and it is widespread for all edu for all schools across. So the last time that we were here, so our CEO Sara, she told you that we have seven schools yep. and we're going towards 30. But now we've been adopted by 40 schools wow. across Pakistan, across 16 districts. And why have they done so? It is because we've started to prove our impact to them. So for instance, 90% um, of teachers who are using the Talimabad app okay. to learn uh, the teacher training, they say that they've substantially increased their knowledge on how to teach. Okay. Similarly, uh, in schools that we've been, that have adopted Talimabad, uh, the most interesting fact is that when we went there, so students were not at a grade level, that is that they could mm -hmm. not do Understood. the level of arithmetic okay. or, or, or literacy problems mm -hmm. that were there for their grades. Okay. And only three out of 10 students were able to do it. But after six months of adopting Talimabad, now eight out of 10 students are able to do uh, those problems. And that tells you the impact that Talimabad is creating right now. Uh, so for, so for the what is there in that app, you know, that, you know, yeah. changes so, the outlook of the kids? Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great question. And for me, it is something like uh, describing it, uh, this complex product in a simple uh, way is going to be like uh, an investor who said, uh, look, Talimabad is a school in a purse or okay. even simpler than that, it just makes learning fun for kids. Okay. So for teachers and for school owners, what happens is that they can have this easy, easy administration and learning about their, their teaching, about their school administration through their, their phones. And right. students, they can go to the, to the learning app, which has video content, which has games, as well as that, 
being amalgamated into the school as well. So the teacher right. teaches those, through those videos and through activities at school, at school, and those children can go back to their homes right. and also learn again through the Talimabad app. So it's exactly. like non-stop fun learning for them. So, it, so it's actually that it actually uh, kind of sits in, in the very roots of the education Absolutely. system. Absolutely. That's what it is. So whatever you were doing, you know, you were learning to as well. But what I wanted to ask over here was that, you know, when we talk about Talimabad, okay, that was fine, you know, yeah. but when we talk about Talimabad school and we are saying that it's a fun way of learning, it's a learning process where, you know, you certainly won't feel that you're learning something. Yeah. It will be fun at the same time because that's how kids are, you know, Absolutely. so my trigger point ever since I was going to school was school itself, the word itself. School yeah. is yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah. yaar, main, ab school is very difficult, you know, things like that. So yeah. why not come up with some amazing names or probably you know change the way people think about schools too as well you know so why you know even if we are talking about an education technology based solution why name it school again yeah so basically the idea with now the name talimabad yeah. in itself uh it's like it's just like islamabad in a sense that uh, knowledge uh, city yeah knowledge so, city absolutely yeah. so that was the idea but it is kind of like a metaverse within education so what happens with Talimabad is that Talimabad, we've created this uh, hypothetical city for children. Okay. And the characters in the videos, okay. they're basically living in the city named Talimabad. Wow. And they do different activities of sorts. They get into trouble and then they, they, they negotiate through different skills which teach, teaches children about different collaborative skills as well as social emotional learning. Wow. Plus also teaches them about numeracy and literacy as well. Yeah. So for example, now they're stuck with not knowing where to go and they're right. going to start calculating. We're we sharing some images yeah. as well. So if you want to talk about that, you know, you can certainly take advantage of this yeah, opportunity. Sure. So, so mainly uh, the idea is to make videos or content that kids would, lo would love. They are involved with the whole idea of the gamification of uh, learning in a way that of course your daughter would also be someone who'd love it as well uh, just to know that she's playing a game but you'd also know that she's learning as well True. so how perfect of a match is it uh, and and the same thing with schools as well Squ children come to school they see that they, they, they realize that the teacher is actually involving them in activities or showing them games or they have this beautifully scripted lesson plan yep. uh, or teacher guide that is there for them and what it does is that it helps them uh, not feel that they're in some sort of a chore, but instead they're actually involved in this fun little game which is helping them learn as well. And that's how a school would be revolutionized. Yeah. I think, I think that's right. wonderful. And okay. in addition to that, I'm okay. very sorry, uh, Haja, but I wanted to move on to Faisal Saab over here because you happen mm -hmm. to be an educationist, you're a teacher yourself. And a teacher truly understands the core value of education. When we talk mm -hmm. about education, a lot of parents yeah. do have their concerns about how their kids have a lot of screen time these days. And imagine once again, you know, we are coming up and we are promoting an application which mm. is all about fun learning mm. and we truly get that and we've seen positive impact of it on teachers, parents and students. But now let's talk about how a teacher certainly want to educate the children, you know, because this is uh, obviously as far as it is an obligation, I think it's more of an ob moral obligation for you to mm -hmm. kind of look or look after the kids holistic uh, you know, nurturing and making sure that they learn and then they play and there's physical activity, there's a mix of everything. So what do you say about Talimabad? Do you think that it actually gives us a lot of screen time? Or do you think that it actually teaches us that, okay, you know what, only for one hour, two hour you learn, you go, you play, you come back, do whatever you want to do? Okay, first I will start from the screen time. Okay. Screen time means... F in, in nowadays even, our kids are learning, it's, it's, it's not about learning, they are seeing different cartoons, they are watching That's different clear. kind of different kind of seasons even. True. So basically, what Talimabad does with them, Talimabad incorporate cartoons in in education. Okay. So basically, when your kid is kind of doing some kind of interactions on screens, so they are interaction interacting and also learning. Okay. So this is this is the both. So basically, if if kind of any 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 kid is very interested in in some specific cartoon. So they will be interested in Talimabad because we they developed a kind of th this kind of things. So then the kids would also love to learn according to their cartoons and all these things. All right. So basically, when when uh, we trained kids, so we help them to learn through the screen, not only seeing the cartoon or other things as well. Yeah. Okay, so right. once the kid starts to learn, uh -huh. why can't we do that or Talimabad kind of prompts the kids that, hey, you know what, you've learned enough for today. 
uh-huh. why don't you put your um, iPad or whatever or cell phone away and then uh-huh. go and play with your mom and dad or your siblings and then come back after an hour so we'll have another interesting story for you. You know, something of that needs to be incorporated so that the kid actually now realizes that, hey, you know what, if this is important, Talimabad, uh, I'm loving it, I'm learning from it and I just cannot stay away from it. So mm-hmm. Talimabad itself teaches or uh, kind of embeds the value into the kids that, hey, you know what, playing is important too as well. So I think I'm going to come back to the strategist uh-huh. over here as well. So why not this? Huh? So uh, it, w- what we do, as, as you said, it is kind of like Talimabad is not only just about literacy and numeracy, True. but it, it provides this kind of like holistic experience for children that they can get into this uh, universe of sorts. And within it, of course, that, that is something that we've embedded within uh, the learning content. So children would learn about going outside, helping people. So one of the, uh, one of the scar- uh, series that I remember, one of the episodes that I remember, it was basically the same, that uh, there was a child who was in a wheelchair as well, and then we, uh, we had him come to the playground too, and the other kids, they weren't sure whether to play with him or not. And yeah. then one of the kids, he was completely detached, working on uh, uh, just playing games. And then it was about how they made them realize as well that, okay, we need to be inclusive of 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 uh, people who have some sort of disability plus also getting this idea for for others as well that okay he showed them about Tarimabad right. like look I'm learning from Tarimabad and like but yeah let's also play football together as well right. and then what it does the whole universe sort of thing that that is there is that it helps children understand different things together it's not only about literacy and numeracy but all other skills as oh. well and what what happens then uh, at an overall is that once you go to school, to a Talimabha school, children learn this through their teachers, through that scripted teacher guide, through activities. And then once they go back home, they can also re- revise this through that uh, video that they loved at, in their school as well. And then parents can also sit down, watch it with them, play the games with them as well. And then they would also realize that, okay, Talimabha is not only focusing on literacy and numeracy, yeah. but all these other skills together. Exactly. Well. And I, in yeah. fact, right. love the idea of how you're making sure that, you know, that the children are actually going to draw inspiration from Talimabha yeah. and how you're coming up with these stories where this little girl actually wants to be an astronaut too as well or an astronomer. Yeah. And so, you know, this is uh, in collaboration with PTV that you're doing Science Bean as well. So, you know, we yeah. want to show the trailer first and mm-hmm. then we want you to kind of explain about it. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right, let's go. Let's take a look, ladies and gentlemen, how our kids will now be, inshallah, not saying that, you know, I just want to be a doctor or an engineer, rather an astronaut. Why not? Let's do this. Let's go. Let's take a look. Wow, you know, these were some very amazing, you know, graphics and especially, you know, coming back to the online education and the need was more pronounced, you know, when the COVID hit across the country and across the globe, you know, uh, when schools were closed down. Um, So how do you make sure, you know, how do you tread that fine line between, you know, teaching your teachers and and training them and then your, you know, the students that they are um, there and also, you know, about the mental health because, you know, too much screen time as Shazad also talked about it. Um, And Hajar understands it. (laughs) Yes, can be really harmful for that, but also while making sure that your kids are well acclimatized with the digital technology and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, first great question. And the idea behind this, Haja, of course, is that uh, Talimabad, the the exacerbation in a sense, it happened within COVID. And the reason for that was because people wanted a solution that could not, like if the kids were not going to school, then they wanted them to learn somehow similarly for teachers to be trained when there was no physical training being there as well. And Tarimabad perfectly fits, fits into this. Uh, and especially for school owners that they can just manage everything, as I said, school in a purse. So what's the better way to go about it? And just to come back to the first thing that you were referring and you were talking about Hajar right. wanting to be an astronomer as well and you loving science. and. Science being in that sense is an upcoming project that we are very passionate about and the idea of that is this uh, young aspiring astronomer and uh, aspiring astronaut and scientist named Kishmish 
who right. goes into these uh, different wacky kind of explanations about science and something perhaps that you'd love to see with your daughter mm. as well because this is something that's homemade that's been and it's built going to be interesting in house in Pakistan too. as well right. and you were talking about the James Webb telescope and that's one of the episodes in fact the first episode wow. it goes into detail about <coughs> explaining to kids how the original Hubble telescope worked right. and as you said how Allah Ta'ala has created this beautiful universe for us to explore as well and then uh, Kishmish traveling along with the kids who are watching us on screen and making them realize that how science can be so magical and, and fun as and, well. And this right. is how learning is going to be fun too as well. So very quickly towards the end, one last question from Faisal Sahib and Faisal Sahib that is that you know as a teacher, how do you think Talimabad has contributed towards your teaching skills? Basically Talimabad is providing a complete teacher training. Okay. And that's helping us that to too, through application. Yes, that too through application basically. Right. And that helping us basically to learn how we can teach better to students. Wow. That's, that's wonderful. Right. And it's as simple as that. So ladies and gentlemen, all you need right. to do is download the application. Please make sure that you pay. It's a very bare minimum amount for the next six months too as well. And yeah, just have fun alongside with your kids as well. And does it give us the option of screen sharing as well? Just yeah. like we have it on Netflix or Prime Video where how five people can use it if one p person downloads it. You know, so do we have that kind of resource available? So that's a great suggestion and I can look <laughs> back. But otherwise it's just free to try as well. And similarly for Talimaba schools apps, so school owners that want to try it, they can just download it and go on a free trial, see how amazing it is. Yeah. And then right. we can figure out other things. And okay. yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. because they, it is some legendary stuff, which is why they're here over, uh, on PT World as well. So please make sure that you do give it a try as well. A wonderful initiative, a wonderful learning process for the children out there as well. And yes, my daughter has uh, gone through this habit of how she already okay. felt that you know she's a part of whatever she's watching on her iPad. Oh, okay. So she would put it on the floor and then stand on top of it and oh. be like, hey, you know what, I'm still playing. <laughs> oh, so I think it's wonderful. But with that, we're actually heading out towards a short break when we talk about education. We really need to learn a few things as well. And it's because of the fact that, you know, when we talk about urban flooding, ladies and gentlemen, it's because of the people who really does not kind of rely on their responsibility of being a good citizen and they've encroached right. a few spaces and places where now the water has no place to go. What do we do about it is something we will be talking about in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in Ayah Hasayah.
Sarangi is a bowed, short-necked string instrument from subcontinent, which is used in Pakistani classical music. Its flexible tunability and its ability to produce a large pillow of tonal color and emotional nuance makes it unique. Welcome back and you know earlier on we were talking about the weather and you know Shazad also mentioned about the urban flooding and how we are not you know very much acting responsibly when it comes to uh, performing our civic duties in that sense and you know uh, so Pakistan so there's a study Shazad by the German watch which says that the less developed countries are going to uh, suffer the maximum consequences of the climate change yes it's a human made uh, catastrophe that uh, we are facing na right now but how much we are contributing towards it that's a question or uh, especially when it comes to five percent, <laughs> right, or less than that. Okay, uh, and and when it comes to you know climate change and the urban flooding, you know, is it really the climate change you know that is contributing towards it, or uh, whether you know we have built our houses in the way of the water, you know, that is causing so much chaos and mess, you know, especially when it comes to the monsoon season. And the IPCC also said that you know South Asia is going to experience more uh, humidity and prolonged um, bouts of the monsoon season right here. So we are going to talk about the relationship between the climate change and the urban flooding and what we can do to combat uh, the climate change in the, over the green recovery. Um, and in addition to that, you know, what I wanted to say was that GIS, uh, you know, National right. Disaster Management Authority published this story as well, where right. they said that, you know, just around uh, uh, last year, you know, uh, almost the same time, right. uh, the monsoon rains we experienced, you know, this time around, it has doubled and they say that it was because oh. of climate change. So we really want to get to the basics. We really need to know how we can actually kind of protect ourselves because Unfortunately, right. 88 people, ladies and gentlemen, according to NDMA, have died because of flash floods. Right. And not just that, you know, it is because of climate change. Last year around, we saw, you know, how there was flooding in E11 too as well. So right. urban flooding has increased. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of encroachment. And we'll talk about that. We're very lucky that we've actually been joined by some very apt guests over here in the studios with us. We're very lucky that we've been joined by climate change research analysis. Uh, and uh, he happens to be Mohammed Amir Khan Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Good Thank morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you. And not just that, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from somewhere abroad. You know, she happens to be an environmentalist. She used to be here in the studios, but now she's over Skype. She's in joining, uh, joining us as well. So we're very lucky that we've been joined by Ms. Mariam Shabir Sahib as well. Hello, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. Always a pleasure to come into your show. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you over here. I'm just going to right. request the team to please turn on the speaker within the studios too as well. <laughs> right. So that so we, we can actually kind right. of say our hellos and salams too as well. But right. Mariam, first up, you know, the question which I would certainly want to ask is that, you know, right. uh, I have shared the statistics of the NDMS report where they said that this year around, we have doubled the, uh, you know, there's a double uh, rain status of, uh, you know, how the monsoon rains are taking place. So whatever the downpour was the last year, this year around has doubled. So how do you think that we connect it with climate change? And do you think it is because of climate change? Or, or is it really the climate change, you know, that is impacting the worst urban flooding that we are witnessing? Or is it that, you know, we have built our houses in the wrong places in the first place? Both. Right. Actually, it's the uh, combination of both. Uh, it is the, the unprecedented rainfall is, of course, related to increasing global warming. And uh, that increased global warming has caused forest fires and snow melting and it's a combination of everything because when you talk about, you know, uh, forest fires, you know, uh, the, the debris and uh, lack of trees also uh, exacerbates the situation. So it's a combination of both uh, uh, climate change and also a combination of, you know, mismanagement, I would say, or uh, 
ill planning uh, of towns and cities as well uh, because uh, in in major cities you would see uh, we are going in every direction without any planning and there is no way of water uh, that where it can go or in, it can you know go into uh, whether in ground in the form of groundwater or uh, in the form of any drain uh, and houses are built on that and uh, just the way you mentioned uh, the situation in e11 last year that was also problem because those houses and uh, markets were built on the drainage uh, which blocks uh, fresh on uh, rain water or any other water which comes in the way and you see impacts in the form of on the roads and damaging housing and lives and livestock and everything right, right. right. in addition to that you know when when we talk about you know uh, monsoon rains obviously every year round we have seen over in pakistan that you know there are flash floods now what I need to ask is that the last time when we were in mm. conversation with people from NDMA, in fact, the DG NDMA was here and he said that flash floods are important at the same time for us for the recharge too as well. So how do you think that we kind of come around the way because they said that dams will not essentially provide us throughout the year with water. In fact, it's going to be flash floods which are going to kind of add on towards the recharge as well. So how right. do you think that we kind of comprehensively figure out a way or making sure that the recharge is there because Pakistan is just around the corner when we talk about water scarcity as well. Uh, you know, you're very right. Uh, in, in some uh, time of the year, there is too little water and water scarcity and in other uh, time uh, of the year, there is too much water. So, uh, you know, you're right that uh, there should be a way and there are ways to actually, uh, which, which gives uh, time to, to the earth. Uh, where it can store water and recharge water itself and uh, in, in the previous government there was this uh, plan of uh, recharge Pakistan program I don't know if, if the current ministry is looking at it or not but that was announced it was not implemented yet but there are ways uh, to which one can uh, uh, store water and governments can take initiatives one way is to increase wetlands or the other way is to learn from other countries as well, like China has, what they have done is that in 2015 they, they uh, started a program with the name Sponge Cities. And what they did in that is that uh, they, they, uh, they have built asphalt, uh, uh, asphalt uh, uh, roads, you can say, or uh, pavements, you can say, and, uh, and in that, you know, that, that uh, allowed uh, uh, water to... Uh, flow without damaging uh, your infrastructure and also give enough uh, you know uh, time uh, to your earth and to your wetlands and other systems to absorb water so uh, pakistan can also do like one is to increase of course of uh, afforestation uh, plant more trees and other is uh, to because plants hold trees through their uh, roots and also you can increase wetlands which can you know store and absorb more water and of course small uh, and little reservoirs uh, they also need to be built because you know this rainwater and monsoon water with flood it goes like you know in no time and you do not have enough time to store water and before this flood came or this situation happens uh, we need to take long-term measures instead of uh, doing measures in haphazard manner or in emergency situations like always do. Uh, but you know, I was looking at NDME website and they had very, uh, they have very comprehensive plan. And if uh, funding and technology is provided and capacity is there, those in, those plans can be implemented and can uh, turn the way around uh, for water availability in the future as well. That's right, wonderful. so now coming back to Amir, uh, you, uh, so how much is it important, you know, to build a good uh, street designs because, you know, the urban floodings have made it more clear that, you know, uh, we need to have a good sewerage system when it comes to that. And also it is mentioned in the SDGs which were erected in the first place to combat the climate change, right? Uh, so good inclusive street designs also means that we can accommodate the hawkers and the vendors or there's no place for them. Because right. Karachi DHA actually feels like a port now. Yeah. <laughs> So actually when uh, it comes, um, I mean, talking about uh, urban flooding and all these right. things, it actually needs to be implemented. I mean, uh, our cities, they are not sustainable, right? right. Yeah. We are just building concrete jungles and right. we don't have sustainable approaches, how, right. how we are, you know, acting with floods and all these things. Right. So, um, I mean, this is just a suggestion like working 
uh, along construction, we should keep all these floods and all these uh, environmental scenarios in our minds, mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, uh, enhance our capacity to uh, also to re recharge our reservoirs mm -hmm. yeah. and to act accordingly. Right. So, when it comes to Karachi, Amir, uh, yeah. how can we, you know, combat the urban flooding, which is there? Of course, we uh, we know that you know the sewage system is not very much great over there, and there's a lot of you know blockage blockages when it yeah. comes to you mm -hmm. know the discharge of water. Uh, so, what do you suggest? You know, what can be done? You know, in order to make so that city. So, first of all, I would say that we should, uh, uh, I mean, uh, make recharge, recharge systems, reservoirs, right. so that the floods, I mean, uh, the water um, shocks, I mean, th that can be reduced. Right. And along with that, we should, you know, uh, we should have sewerage system, right. en uh, enough and efficient sewerage system, right. the, without pollu uh, pollutions. Right. So that the water can go alongside and right. along the way, right. uh, and along with that, I would uh, suggest that plantation alongside the rivers. I mean, right. that is yeah. also a way to effective you way. Know, yeah, effective way. And and yeah. in addition to that, now you know, since obviously this is a wonderful recommendation, but once a city is developed and that yeah. to as big as Karachi, I think right. it's really very difficult for the government or you know the people who are responsible to kind of figure out a way whether how to kind of get the discharge of the water you know feasible for themselves because you know they've been saying or you know everybody was there but what's the point of everybody being there because we do not certainly have the machinery yeah. to kind of take that water out now we certainly cannot uh, figure out a way to uh, you know have some sewage systems probably yeah. where you know the water can dispel not just that in addition to that obviously there's going to be a lot of diseases within Karachians because of the fact it was Bakraid you know so all the hides and everything the leftovers mm -hmm. are just all around the water you know the water is at least waist deep as well yeah. so imagine I think that you know going back to and kind of coming after the very solution that you know what that the water obviously now the sewage systems cannot be installed yeah. what are the smarter solutions you know there might be other countries yeah. using other mechanisms to making sure that the water does not stay on streets okay so nowadays the trending situation is that uh, each house they they have I mean the rooftop the water the rain water they they each uh, house they have the capacity to to to, to store their water okay uh, like uh, the rain water it will f flow d uh, down to bore okay. the bo boring water so that i mean the what the levels. actual water levels it can recharge and it can uh, go up well. right so th uh, this is this is how i mean the um, the whole s uh, systems um, each house and each city it can you know, have such sort uh, sort uh, sort of uh, reservoirs mm -hmm. so that they can recharge their uh, water levels, and uh, obviously the flood. I mean, the water level will uh, decrease. W will decrease. Okay, wonderful. Well, let let me move on to Miss Mariam as well. So, Miss Mariam, I'm going to ask you the same question as well. Okay, this is one solution where in in a city as populated as Karachi. I think we really need to come up with more smarter solutions. Uh, there will be a few houses which might have the system incorporated where the rainwater is going to go down to the bore and they will be able to utilize the same water. But what I need to ask is that, you know, to save Karachiites from this inconvenience every single year, because I've lived in Karachi for five years and this is the story of every single year that we used to face. Right. There was water and there's no other way around as well. What would you suggest but that when we talk about cities as populated as Karachi, what can be the most feasible and the uh, least expensive ways of making sure that there's no more such inconvenience in years to come. So do you have an answer for that? Right, and I also want you to talk about the green recovery, you know, how can we make sure that, you know, as Shazad mentioned that, you know, uh, there are more smarter ways to cope up with the climate change. Okay, so uh, the first lesson which rest of the cities and rest of Pakistan can learn is that, you know, stop building and going like Karachi. And the second thing is that how one can save Karachi is to pray from Allah because there is no other way. But what what one can do and relevant institutions can do is, of course, uh, one is that, you know, the drains uh, which are existing already, they should be cleaned uh, before uh, before the uh, rain comes because you have uh, weather forecast with you, you know, when, when is rain going to come, uh, when it is going to rain. So you have to clean drains uh, which are, you know, full with solid waste and plastic waste and everything so that, you know, it, it, can, it has a space uh, for flowing water. Uh, I think MDMA uh, with relevant institutions cleaned one drain, but there are, uh, in my memory, around six drains which were originally in the, uh, uh, when Prachi was built, originally it was in the plan. So those six drains need to be discovered because on so most of the drains, you know, now there are like DHAs and other uh, housing schemes over there. 
So uh, alternate drains, maybe, or I think if if you know uh, the drastic step which which can be done, if which is which is not really good good for people or economy, is to demolish houses which are on drains. I think that is going to save in the longer run to Karachi, but otherwise, you know, um, there is going to uh, urban flooding again and again. Or also, uh, Karachi should be, you know, uh, now that... building housing vertically. I think your expression tells us that what you're trying to say over here is that Allah hai kare about Karachi. But very quickly, one last question towards the end of the program, and that is that the one other major problem during these flash floods is due, uh, due to the torrential rains that the sewage system kind of uh, comes and matches with the drainage system as well. So, you know, the water we were drinking mm -hmm. is now combined with, unfortunately, those unhygienic waters too as well of the sewage systems as well. We do not have a separate right. system. And even when we talk about the recharge, obviously all of this water, when it settles down under the earth, you know, it's going to be a mix of both as well. And then again, illnesses and problems too as well. So can we figure out a way where we can make sure that, God forbid, if such a flood is going to take place every single year, at least the sewage water does not combine with the water we are supposed to drink and use in our daily lives as well. Can we figure out a way for that? Yeah, there, there, there is, exists technology around, around the world, you know, uh, which, through which you can detect the leakage of pipes which are uh, involving um, in, you know drainage system and also drinking water pipes you know you can always repair in relevant institutions can always repair them in advance and also there uh, are a lot of uh, you know uh, clean drinking mechanisms which are in place uh, and which are cheap as well and the most cheapest way is to uh, just boil water at home and then when it cools down just drink that and use for domestic purposes I think that is also most cheap way, but uh, if you have technology and funding, there are ways around the world which can be adopted. Exactly, given the technology and the funding, but thank you very much, Ms. Mariam, for being with us. Thank you very much, Sami, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation with you and for everybody who's out there. What I don't get is, you know, when it gets too hot, you know, that's something which we cannot right. bear. When it starts to rain, right. that's something which we cannot right. handle. Right. I mean, we certainly really need to focus on building more capacity. And for all of those people right. within the public offices who have been giving permissions to people to create these concrete jungles, please, yeah, you know, have some sense, you know, make sure that you are just not worth uh, a few rupees, thousands of rupees right. or hundreds of thousands of rupees. And right. please make sure that you think about the better future of the country rather than just yourself and your family. And you know what, Shahzad, our uh, ancestors rather, I would say, the Indus Valley civilization have some great lessons to taught us, to teach us when it comes to the urban planning because True. they had a proper uh, drainage and sewage exactly. system. Exactly. I just learned from that. Islamabad, yeah. <laughs> right. right. That, right. That's so. it. Till the next time, look after yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Till the next time, uh, remember us all in your prayers and have a great day, all right? And make sure you stay back home. Do not go out unnecessarily and when if, uh, it's flooding, make sure that you certainly stay back at home and do not use any electric appliances because that can be dangerous. So the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning.